Well, let's just start this thing with a cliche. We're nothing at camera crisis, if not boring, bang for your buck. That's what the Panasonic G7 is all about. Intro. I don't really have an intro. Who has time when I have information to get to you people? Hey, this is Camera Crisis. If you like talking about cameras and obsessing over things that you shouldn't, this is your place right here. Gear talk all the time. Thanks for showing up. Subscribe, like, comment. I think the Panasonic G7 just might be the best value in the entire universe if you want to take video especially and you also want to do some photos. I was debating on how I would do this thing, you know, put up specs and all that. And I'm sure if you're looking up the Panasonic G7, you've come to other videos besides mine and they're very spec heavy and they show you, you know, the facts. We don't do that here. We don't, we don't deal in facts. We deal in, in feelings and uh, other things. It doesn't tell the story just to do the specs of this camera. This G7 is, I love it. I don't know anyone who's ever bought it that doesn't love it. And yes, there is an implicit bias. When you purchase an item, you generally are favorable towards that item. Then that's the psychological thing in case you don't. So all these YouTubers, when they're talking about how much they love their cameras, yeah, you own that camera. so. It, it, psychologically speaking, it makes you feel better if you end up loving the thing that you spent a lot of money on. But I digress. The point is, I actually do love this thing, and I know that for sure because I have better cameras than this now. I have a Sony a7 III, and I have a Panasonic GH5, the grown-up adult of the uh, Panasonic G7. And they are better cameras, but I cannot get rid of this Panasonic G7 because it's too good. It comes in handy too many times. First of all, okay, so I'll just tell you the stuff that I think is really important about it. You got, you got the 4K. It, it creates an amazing 4K image. I'm shooting this entire thing on uh, the G7 right now. If you like the way this looks, and I hope you do, because, you know, I put blue lights in the background. So, that's yeah, professional. I'm sorry, I gotta keep moving my shirt. My mic is trying to drag down my shirt some kind of peep show here. I'm not gonna get monetized, right? If I'm showing off the goods. Like I was saying, it's got crisp 4K. It looks super nice. I love the image you can get out of this thing. Some of the best footage I've ever shot comes out of the G7. I'll be looking at it and I'll be thinking, yeah, I shot that with the GH5, but I didn't. I, sh I shot it with the G7. And if I have examples of clips I've shot, I will put them up now, and then maybe I'll be talking over them like this so that there's space to put them in. And if I didn't have those clips, then I just cut that part out. And this 4K image comes in at $500. I should have started the video with the price of the camera. You guys, you guys probably already know it. Right now on B&H, they're selling the camera and the lens, and I think some accessories like a camera bag for $497 US. I can tell you for sure, using this camera, that is a steal. I totally forgot this part, so I recorded it after, and I'm telling you now, and Future Mark is here to say that I usually use the Panasonic 25 millimeter F 1.7. Now that's a 50 millimeter equivalent full frame, so the nifty 50, and the thing costs $147 right now on B&H Photo. Now, when I tell you these prices, uh, $147 right now as of October 30th, 2020, and uh, the $497 for the camera and the kit lens, yeah, that might change, and maybe it's on sale right now, but it always goes on sale. Don't buy it full price. You know, you got, you got your Black Fridays coming up, your Christmas deals, your whatever. There's always good sales on this camera and its accessories and the lenses. So look for a good deal, then pull the trigger. You won't be sorry. Okay, back to the old Mark. He was so young. Cute. And I can tell you from owning the fancy a7 III that this G7 is just a breeze to use. It's a joy. The a7 III is difficult to use. This camera, first of all, it's got this Panasonic app. I'm using it right now to monitor myself, even though it's also got a flippy screen. I'll talk about that as well in the positives. But, so what I'm doing is the camera's too far away for me to tap to focus because the thing has terrible autofocus. Okay, I'll get into that later too. But you just, you can just tap the app 
and then it locks focus. And as long as I don't go running around in circles, I'm going to stay in focus. And I can see what I'm doing. I can adjust almost every setting that the camera has from this app. It's, it's fantastic. You compare it to the Sony app, it's night and day. This, it's just, the G7 is so usable. It's got this, the, on the flippy screen, first of all, the flippy screen, so you can turn it out and see what you're doing just when you're, when you're out and about. And uh, even when you're sitting in a studio, you need to be able to see yourself. I got, a, I got like a little mirror hack rigged up to my a7 III because I can't see myself. It's useless for video in that sense. I just, it bothers me so much. But the flip screen is also totally a touch screen. And you would think, oh, all, all cameras have great touch screens. No, they don't. Most of them do not. But the Panasonic G series, just the entire thing is click and touch and you can you can tap to focus and you can expand and drag and the menu is laid out in a very easy to understand manner even for a doofus like myself i got it i mastered it in a very short period of time and teachers used to write on my report card he tries but the battery life this blows me away i let this run the other day for just to see how long it will go and on one battery for uh 24p 4k footage it ran for an hour and 58 minutes just running for an hour and 58 minutes, there's no overheating. It's not even possible on this thing. You cannot overheat it no matter how much you try. It's just an hour and 58 minutes of 4K recording on one battery? It's ridiculous. And the thing weighs nothing. And I mean that. It, may, it weighs less than a pound. It's 410 grams, I think, in Canadian. 410 grams. So you can put this on pretty much any kind of gimbal because the thing has no stabilization. I'll put that in the comms as well. But it doesn't have stabilization, but any kind of gimbal that you have, you can just walk around with it and, and it the gimbal will be able to support it with a lens because the lenses are so small. Look, look at this. This is a uh, 42.5. So in a micro four thirds world, this is an 85 millimeter full frame equivalent. And it's a uh, 1.7, which is a 3.4 equivalent, but still you can, Portraits. You can take some really nice portraits with this thing and get a really nice blurry background. The bokeh. Am I saying that right? Gerald Undone? Bokeh. Bokeh? Bokeh. And I used to think the weight of a camera was no big deal until I started carrying around heavy cameras. And then I realized how much I missed this thing. I went on a trip one time to France. Don't ask me why. Something about my wife wanting to go. And I take this thing and I'm carrying it in my hand all day every day just taking pictures of the stuff i like and it didn't occur to me that that was a weird thing to do now that i take the a7 III along with his big old lenses i have to put it in a bag and put it on my shoulder because i can't just hold it in my hand all day it weighs too much this thing less than a pound oh my god and some people say they don't like the build quality that it's plastic i think it feels fantastic i love the grip it feels like a little solid camera to me i love this thing and you might be saying yeah but it has a 29 minute record limit no it does not if you first of all most times you'll never need more than 29 minute record limit but sometimes you do myself included because sometimes i'll, I'll tape long stand-up comedy sets i'm a stand-up comedian in my real life so if i'm taping an hour-long set that 29 minutes is, is not going to cut it so this camera though with just a couple of button presses, you can turn, put it into service mode, which I have had it in since 2015. Yes, this camera came out in 2015, and you think, wow, wow, that is too old. It is not. That's why Panasonic still sell it. It's why B&H still sell it. It's why, and that's why there's so many YouTubers making videos about, is the G7 worth buying in 2020? Yes. Will everyone stop with that line? Is it worth buying? Yeah, yeah, it is. Just put the word yes next to it because it is. So back to the unlimited recording hack. You just, you press a couple of buttons, it's in service mode, and then it just records continuously until your battery runs out or your SD card runs out. And uh, I'll link below a step-by-step -step instruction video to how to do that if you want to. I've done it and uh, it has had no ill effects on the camera whatsoever for the entire time I've used it. I would recommend you do that. Another great thing about this camera is the time lapses. Panasonic do time lapses so friggin' well. 
friggin', that's a, people say that a lot where I'm from, but you probably don't even know what that means. They do it very well. What they do is it's in camera. So you take all these photos, you just press a couple of buttons, and then it starts taking photos for you for the time period you want. And when it's done, it puts the photos together and gives you your time lapse, your, your 4K time lapse. A bunch of fancier cameras will still make you take the pictures and put them in the Lightroom and put it together yourself. Come on guys, who has time to be doing that? I didn't even have time to make an intro. Now let's talk about the photos. I like taking photos with this thing. The, the focus is snappy, snappy fast when, when you're taking photos. Photos. And some of the best pictures I've taken have been on this thing. It's a 16 megapixel sensor, so you don't want to blow these things up to billboard size, but you can still print out some pretty nice pictures. It's got, a, it's got a 4K burst mode, so you can hold it down and it takes a little movie of the scene you're looking at, and then you can select a photo out of that little scene. That's kind of cool. It's a surprisingly capable stills camera. So let's get this straight. We have a 4K camera with a beautiful image, with great photo capabilities, with fantastic time lapses, with all day battery life, with unlimited recording time, for less than $500. So what are the downsides? There's some, there's some. Number one, it's a micro four thirds camera. So you're not going to get really, really fast glass. You can't get like a, you know, 1.4 lens because everything is doubled in micro four thirds. So even if you had a 1.4 lens, technically it would be a 2.8 lens. So what I'm saying is you need a fair amount of light to get good image. So out in the daylight, you're fine. And when you're inside, make sure you have some nice lights set up like myself and uh, you'll definitely get a nice crisp image. It has no slow motion speak up. There's no variable frame rate in 4K. You can do 60 frames per second in 1080 and that can slow it down a little bit, but then you're in 1080. So there's basically no slow motion on that thing. So if you're doing a lot of Peter McKinnon, this camera is not for you. Another sort of negative is that it cuts your clips up into four gigabyte files. So if you tape for a long time, you're going to have clips that are separated and you have to put them together in post. It's not that big of a deal. You can just put the clips together later and there's, there's no gaps or anything. But it's something to bear in mind when you're trying to sync up audio. I like it when it's just one long file. You press record and there's one big file comes out. But the truth is this four gigabyte segmented thing comes in handy sometimes. Like I say, so I'm at a comedy show and I want to tape myself and I'm at the end and I'm going to do an hour but there's 30 minutes in front of me that I don't want, but I can't be near the camera, so I just press record at the beginning. So all those 30 minutes, instead of me having that giant file, a giant hour and a half long file, that's the four gigabyte clips, I can just cut all those out and throw them in the trash and not waste my hard drive space. So sometimes, sometimes it's an advantage. I do like that, but overall it's better to have one long file. No IBIS, no in-body image stabilization. So if you go walking around with this camera, you're gonna get some seriously shaky footage. So you either wanna leave it on a tripod or take it around with a gimbal. And of course, the major negative is the autofocus. There is no autofocus on it. I mean, there is autofocus on it, but do not use it. It simply does not work. I don't know why Panasonic can't get this right, but in the G7, they got it very wrong. So what you wanna do is uh, use the app, like I say, and then you can just tap the focus and then stay still. So for talking head stuff, YouTube videos where you're staying still, if you're interviews, it all works, it works just great. Now, if you wanna be out and about and you wanna just take the camera around on say a gimbal, then what I would recommend doing is you get a wide angle lens and then you put your f-stop up a little bit to like six or seven. And that way pretty much everything is in focus all the time and you don't have to worry about it losing focus or you trying to pull focus with the focus by wire thing. That is not easy. But look, this thing relative to cameras is super cheap, so there's going to be some drawbacks. That's why I would say, look, if you have $900 and a little more, because you need some room for lights and stuff like that, but if you have $900 to spend on a camera, I would buy the Sony a6400 because it's got a 24 megapixel sensor. It's got amazing autofocus with the eye tracking. You, you won't have to worry about the autofocus. If you're just starting out and 
you have enough money, the A6400, I think, is the best thing to get. And now if you have $700, I would probably get the Panasonic G85. That's just a newer version of the G7. You know, uh, they have a G95 now, but that is too expensive. It's like 1200 bucks. But the Panasonic uh, G85 is at B&H right now for, I think, 697 So if you have 700 bucks, you get that one because it has the in-body image stabilization and the files are just one long file and it has unlimited recording time already built into the camera and it has some slow motion in 1080p. I think it has 120 frames per second in 1080p. So if you have 700 bucks, G85. 900 bucks, Sony A6400. But for those of us looking to get the best bang for your buck, you're going with Panasonic G7, $500 and all that stuff I just said. So that's it. Thanks for listening to me ramble. I'll be back with some more videos. I do at least a video every week. I'm usually doing a lot more than that. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. It really helps out the channel. Appreciate it. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. What's going on, Spider-Man? You're on camera. Did you know that? You gonna stop some crime?